Hello, I'm Odin, and I've gotten a lot of requests to make Dragon Balls, which, okay, I could do, but as you guys pointed out, I can't even say Saiyan right. So I thought I would go ahead and get a hold of somebody who is actually a fan, who's enjoyed the show, and knows what he's doing. So this is Sherby, and what what started this? What, what, what started the passion for Dragon Ball Z? Um, there was one uh, morning that me and my brother woke up at about six o'clock in the morning, and um, we typically turn on the cartoons. It panned and it showed like these uh, animals, just a screen of animals, oh that's cool. And then there was this big old green dragon in the background and you hear the and then it pans out and the dragon disappears. And then it's nothing but pure fighting after that. And it was like, what is this? And ironically enough, it was the very first episode of Dragon Ball Z. My brother woke up and was like, what is this? I said, I don't know. And from there on out, Fell in love with it. Decided one day to try to figure out how to cast Dragon Balls, and this was all just spur of the moment. Just attempt to do it. A aside from the uh, recognizable stand, yes. what is this here exactly? It's a year-long process of this was the first ball that I ever started and created, working up to how I made it to my first ever successfully casted ball. There's a big difference between how optically clear they are, for, for lack of a better term. <laughs> yeah. I totally get the first ball, and then they're really good, and then it starts to get kind of hard to see, and then this one's really clear again. Yes. But So this is still the progression, though? Uh, kind of, not really. Can, can I explain to you? Please, yeah, sure. please do. Okay, so this was actually done with food coloring. Um, I oh. read on the internet because you believe everything on the internet, so somebody said use food coloring. This ball actually took me eight hours to get it down to this because I used a file and that big nub oh. right here, I filed that and that took me about two hours to go with a hand file. Okay, and this nub is where you're, you're pouring? Yes, yep, okay. exactly. And I learned real quick that they sank, so that's why I poured it. Oh. And they sank immediately, so I learned. So you didn't set them on top, they sank? Yeah, they just sank. Gotcha. And that's what happened with that one, so I was frustrated. I said, you know what, I'm not gonna do any color, so I jumped to this one. Just pure, clear. I went to um, Michael's and found some stars, and as you can see, they are just absurdly big. So this was my first prototype without color. And that looks really yeah, good. Yeah, and that kind of looks like this guy the finished one. So yeah, this was the first successful one, and you notice a bunch of skiff marks. This is one I actually drop a lot, just to show how. Oh, okay. Oh, this is your, your drop test here. That's a great noise, too. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> it's a good noise. It really reminds me of like the, the 60s grapes, the big, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. And I dropped it on the seam, too, so. Just oh, to okay. Show it. No, I'm actually very impressed with your seams because I know when I look at um, paperweights that have insects or coins, yeah. it's very obvious that? where yeah. the seam is, and this is very difficult to see. And from then, somebody pointed me in the right direction of translucent dyes. Okay. So, oh, okay, so I'll look up translucent dyes. Well, I came across um, eager polymers. I use them all the time. All the colors that I use in all my balls are, are from. Uh, eager polymers. All things being equal, I was able to produce this one, and this was my first successful Dragon Ball that I made. This is the first successful Dragon Ball? Yes. Again, God, it's I'm... really hard to see the seam on that. And uh, the amber color is great. That's how you can make Jurassic Park eggs next, too. <laughs> That's, people keep asking me about that. <laughs> I Still shouldn't say some... eggs, yeah. but <laughs> amber, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there it goes. That, that is a year it took me from this point to this point. You're, you're using a mold. Mm -hmm. Can we can we see one? So this one I, I abandoned. Um, this actually, this this guy actually made me about three or four s completed sets. What did you cast? You, you had a positive you cast around. What was that? A uh, cue ball. Can we see a complete set? Yeah, sure. So this is a complete set. Correct. Yep. And and they're always all uh, amber. This set, yes. Okay. Once the wishes are are granted, they go up and they scatter, and it takes a year for them to come back because it gives the dragon that you summon time to rest. Is this, do you just make sets for the fun of it, or do you do commissions, or, 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 or are you just like collecting, hoarding Dragon Balls? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing I, I do is it's, it, it's a hobby. It's not like I'm trying to make money to make ends meet. What I do is I, the money that I make, I put it right back into this. I do it for fun and as a hobby, and because I love uh, Dragon Ball Z that much. Now you have other sets as well, right? Because you're saying it's not just, Correct, I have some other sets. Can we send them all out? Sure, oh, if you sweet. want. Okay, these are awesome. <laughs> and a couple of things I'm seeing is 
This one appears to be signed, and then we've yes. got something going on with the blue ones. <laughs> so this set are called the Dark Star Dragon Balls. This set was from uh, Dragon Ball GT. These were created by uh, Evil Namekian. What happens is if you make a wish on the, the place or planet that you make the wish on, if you do not return them to the original seven, the planet will blow up. <laughs> now All here's right. the catch though is you know how these scatter when you make your wish they scatter throughout the earth okay these go out through the galaxy so you see the <laughs> bit of a bigger easter egg hunt so this one's neat too because i actually met stephanie uh Nat natalie uh-huh and she is actually the voice actress of young goku in uh dragon ball z and also dragon ball gt and then this is a uh set that actually is also from dragon ball gt how this set works is they abuse the dragon a lot, um, okay. and they don't give him enough rest. So what happens is evil comes out. So these actually end up cracking. Now, the cool thing about these is um, I took a metal etcher, and I actually etch cracks into this. So you can feel actually it physically cracked. Oh, yeah. Each one is unique because each, each crack is uh, uniquely different for each ball. It's, it's not the same. And I looked at the picture, and I get the front of the cracks, and then I just do my own on the back. I oh, don't know so, what it's doing in the back, so. So from, just from whichever side's the front for the four, the cracks are right for the show. Yes, but then on the back, I just yep, I just do whatever on the back side. No, so, that's totally cool. Yeah, so all of them facing right now are pretty much from the show, but that's yeah. really cool. And there are two special ones that I've I've made so far. Um, these ones are from a game specifically for Japan only. It's called Dragon Ball Heroes. And these get put into kind of the villains and it amplifies their power. And I, I made those just because I, it, they're red, so. Yeah, yeah, you want a red lightsaber, you want red Dragon yeah. Balls. Exactly, yep. Also, one of them uh, is from the movie that is coming out, which is really hyped and I, oh man, I, I can't wait to see it. I, you see like little snippets of it, it's like, oh, so exciting. <laughs> um, so, so, you've probably been trying to wonder what's under, yeah, what's, what's under the, what's under the, <laughs> what's in the box? No, what's, 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 what's under the, what's under the, what's under the cloth? Well, it's uh, Broly's Dragon Balls. I decided okay. to create them. Those are awesome. Cool, huh? I really like the color on them. I really liked how they turned out. Now, you would like to see some Namekian Dragon Namekian Balls. Dragon Ooh, Balls. Okay. <laughs> so you're gonna slowly work your way through all seven again? Yes. <laughs> yes, they are uh, 12 pounds of plastic. That's how much plastic it takes to so cast each, them. Each one's 12 pounds. Yeah, each one of them is 12 pounds. All right. Pretty much a bowling ball. And that's what I used as a negative was a bowling ball. It was a bowling ball. So yeah. you have the exact same mold, but bowling ball size. Correct. And that is 100 pounds. It's 100 pounds of silicon. Correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. want to do the math on yeah, that no, for, no, for no, purchasing no. it. Okay. <laughs> no, it's awful. <laughs> Has anyone asked or have you thought about doing um, the bowler from Mystery Men? I don't know what that is. In the movie The Mystery Men, uh, uh, the, the one hero, she's got a bowling ball with her father's skull in it, and it's a clear bowling ball with the skull in it. And, and, and when she gets angry, it flies through the air and knocks all the, all the villains down. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah, skull. <laughs> got 300 bucks lying around? <laughs> Let me fall. What, 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 what kind of is your process? I mean, you, you may have like trade secrets, which is cool, but uh, Generally speaking, in, in, in an easy to understand way, what's, what's your uh, process? Once I grab my silicone mold, pop that bad boy open, and what I do is I take clear resin. After I pour enough into a cup, um, I then take the uh, translucent dye, and I add uh, just the color to it. And, and enough is, is for one full ball or, or enough for one half of the ball? Uh, one of the ball, yeah, okay. no matter what, just to keep it a consistent color. After that, stir it slowly because a lot of people want to stir it fast. Plastic resin, you got to go slow. Because you're introducing air bubbles. Correct. One cup is wax and it stirs better when it's waxy. Okay. Um, and then the other two are small little Dixon cups. And from there, once I've got those and separated, I introduce the catalyst and then stir the catalyst. And again, you gotta go slow. Mm -hmm. um, and then I pour the first half to a certain spot. Now you have a, a limited time. Because it's a chemical reaction yep. that's setting up with. Yep, exactly. Okay. It generates its own heat. It yeah, correct. Heat. From there, I introduce the stars. And by eye, so I set the stars with a toothpick and I have to look at them for a little bit to make sure they don't shift. Then what I do is I, I place the silicone mold on top. Then I prep the second cup. 
add the catalyst, stir that, and okay. then I pour. Do it slowly because you don't want to introduce any more bubbles. Right. And you can allow the bubbles to come up and protrude out as it as it fills up to the top. So when when you're pouring, you're you're pouring like the chemistry method where you're pouring down your stir stick to help uh, eliminate bubbles and get Correct. a smaller yeah. stream. Yeah. That was okay. something I learned. It's actually pretty new. I decided why not try that. So okay. I. And, and you're blowing across it. Is that also to blow uh, air bubbles out as it's pouring? I actually will blow on that because it actually helps pop as the bubbles rise. And you want to do that slow oh, okay. because the bubbles will rise at the top and when you blow on it across it, it'll pop. You don't demold immediately. There's, there's like a time that they, they have to cure. Do you let them just sit overnight? Yeah, I just let them sit overnight. Um, it, I just play it safe that way. And then from there you demold it and you do the, the finishing of it, which yep, is yep. grinding off the 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 pour spout knob after that i then go from uh, the 80 grit um, hand grinder to 120 grit and that gets rid of most of the pits that are in the bowl then from there it is about 240 grit and that starts getting it a little bit shinier and that gets rid of a uh, majority of the bigger surface scratches but it also reveals bigger ones as well and i'll sit there and hand hand sand 320 mm -hmm. wet and dry and then rinse and repeat until it is all the same scratch of 320. I learned that pretty quickly is if you take your time and be patient, I know patience is a virtue and it's very difficult, but you can um, go from 320 to 400 grit sandpaper, wet dry sanding, to 600 wet dry sanding very easily. Okay. And, and, and just, just just getting it to- uh, Just getting it just- to and, Where it just looks frosted. And, yep, and it looks frosted and looks, you start seeing the shine of the stars. It's starting to get to the point where you get this really see it. And then why at 600 grit, you can go 1,000 to 2,000. I have access to being able to buff and polish them with a bench grinder. Yep. Okay. And then there is a rough compound, and then there's a finer compound. From there, you take the rough, and there's such a drastic change from, it's incredible, from 600 to just the rough. Just like that, you just it just pops. And it's just incredible to see that because you're thinking to yourself, well, I've worked so hard on this thing and you don't get to see results, but then this is where you really get to see results. And at, at, at that point, it's like microwave quick. Oh yeah, it's, it's great, I love it. And um, once you go from the rough to the finer, you start really just digging in at it and you just can see it and it's like, yes, it's within, you know, within range of what I want it to look like. And then okay. after that, then you buff it with the buffing wheel. It just makes it pop even more and yeah, and then, Done. And then done. And then nice. done. And then yeah. done. It's just done. <laughs> That's awesome. It's easy to say, but it's hard to do. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Fully. I'll, 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 I'll spend 15, 16 hours building a prop. I'll spend 20 hours editing a video. And then you watch it in 10 minutes and it's done. <laughs> Spe speaking of hours, would you like to know how long it took me, man hours, to go from out of the mold to this? To, to this point? To this point, yes. Okay, out of the mold. So this is, you're done casting this, and you've opened it. Correct. So this is just the, okay, how many hours? 60 plus hours. 60 plus hours. Mm -hmm. But check this out though, is I, I learned some stuff from this. Uh huh. So guess how long it takes me for, to get to this point now? Six. Six? Hours. That's a huge difference. A lot, I learned a lot from that and it killed me. I mean, it was, it was brutal, I mean, there was a lot of techniques that I took from this and said, you know what, I can do stuff way different. And so I did that and went to there. And so I can, okay. again, from out of the mold to this, I can almost do one of these in a, in a day if I really want to do it, but. Right, as far as finishing it. Yes, it's, correct. It's gonna take longer for it to set up. That's uh, how I make a Dragon Ball from start to finish. That's awesome. So. Did you have anything else to, to show us or? So this is actually one I bought on Amazon. Oh, really? Yes for 30 bucks, I think. As you can see. I see the seam. Yeah, I see the seam. Yeah, yeah. so you can see. Pretty the, predominantly. Yes. And, these and the are, star is very flat. Yes, the star is very flat. Um, you can see that seam really, really hard on that. I don't know what they do, but I'm they have, sure. They have a mold set up like a giant muffin tin and they're I mixing think up so. five oh, gallons yeah, just, of resin and just pouring. Yep, exactly. And then I just recently, this one's new. This is actually mine. So this one's yours? This is mine. Yes, I, I mimicked that one and this is the first one I've ever made that is four inches big. And yeah, the seam is... It's not as not as noticeable, but... No, yeah, there isn't, just looking at it, there isn't that horizon line of flash, there's the seam, it's just not there. So th I really appreciate you taking us all the way through how no you're making the Dragon Balls, it's really cool. And, and we saw 
all the different ones that you've made here, as well as you talked about uh, ones you can get online that are both licensed and unlicensed. Correct. So I guess in a way, there's like lots of different ways that you can make a Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. but exactly. This? But this is how Sherby makes. I want to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters like Black Label and Carl. You Super Saiyans really do help keep the show going. If you like this video, or if you have an idea for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you build any of these projects, you can send me a picture. As a token of my appreciation, this is for you. Oh, so really? The ball that we made is yours. Really? So that's yours, yeah. <laughs>